I guess post on here. And today let's talk about my Thunder Spirit Iris leak starter for the new Torchlight season. So Iris is the new hero that just got released this season, so I wanted to try it out, even though it's something I usually don't like, which is minions. However, in this game, minions actually feel pretty awesome because they have really good AI depending on which of the spirits you take. There is fire, ice, and there is lightning. In this case, I chose lightning. And these lightning spirits basically get buffed by your Iris over and over again. It is a very typical minion playstyle. However, there's some very intricate mechanics with growth and nourishment that we're going to talk about. In general, this hero is completely crazy during the campaign. Like, I've never seen anything like this. Let's just put it that way. So I would put her at S tier for leveling. And then once you get into maps, you definitely have to get some gearing going. But that's what a, a good leak start is usually about. So... I did really like it. Also, one more thing to note, Iris, since she's a new character, is currently on the Battle Pass, which costs $15. So if you just want to check out the game and you don't want to buy anything yet, or you want to stay completely free to play, then I have a different video down below in the description. Milky made a really cool guide with a character that is completely free to play, so you can check that out as well. Now, this hero is actually a lot more complicated than I first gave it credit for, so I'm going to quickly explain that. But to quickly show you the dummy DPS, so up here you see my nourishment stacks, which basically the higher the better, that's all you have to know for now. But once they ramp up to the max, which is 12, it should go around about 500 million-ish once the minions come up. Basically, I'm just kind of like a buff bot for the minions, right? And there is also some stuff that gets automatically activated. Currently, my investment is around about 1,300, 1,400 FE. But to understand this hero a little bit better, we have to talk about two things, nourishment and growth. So all you have to know, the translation is a little bit weird on this, and I don't know exactly what's going on, but all I can tell you here is growth, the more the better, right? So whenever you see something gives you extra growth, good. More nourishment equals better. Nourishment stacks are these things on the top that I just showed you that you get by, I think, clicking nourishment of life, yeah? You get that over time, and currently my max stacks are 12, which I think are the natural max stacks. You can also increase that with some extremely expensive items, which I don't really have access to. And you get a huge damage buff per nourishment stack. So if you hover over this here, 15% additional damage per stack. Growth itself also has a ton of benefits that are kind of like sprinkled across the board, also across your support gems. So for example, here, harvest time gives you extra damage, and savage growth also gives you extra damage. and when growth talks about certain stages, right? So it gives you basically damage per stage, which means 100, stage 1, 200, stage 2, and so on. Now, then there is another mechanic going on with your summon Thunder Spirit. It has different attacks. It has its normal attack, it has its enhanced attack, and it has an ultimate. What you want to get to is your enhanced attack. So there's, for example, Harvest Time, which gives you extra chance to use your enhanced skill. Now, enhanced skills are not just stronger versions they also help you keep up your nourishment. So enhanced skills do more damage, but enhanced skills also have more upside, which is that you can keep up your nourishment for longer because we're basically stacking a ton of chance to not consume nourishment whenever a lightning golems hit because they hit quite fast. For example, on ice golems or fire golems, that is not as big of a problem because they're more around just hitting big and just a few times per second, but we're absolutely crushing it, right? So we have, for example, Grow Up Quick, which gives us a chance to not consume nourishment stacks. Uh, and we also have Grow With It, which gives us up to minus 42% chance. And yeah, if you hit a lot with enhanced skills, that also means you can use three times these hero memories that give you up to minus 24% chance again. So your nourishment is basically going to be up consistently. And that is a lot more damage. But yeah, the translation is pretty wobbly. What I just said, growth equals good nourishment equals good chance to not lose nourishment stacks equals good and then you have stuff like this for example so uh, if you are a lightning spirit build you want to overcap your resistances because for every excess resistance the spirit of that type gets once again more chance to use an enhanced skill which is very very good enhanced skills equals more damage as well so if you go to your stats right here info uh, just make sure that you have at least 115, so you want to be 40% over what you normally need. If you're using Cold Golem, same thing here, or Fire Golem, same thing with Fire Resist. As you can see right here, I have three Lightning Spirits, and at the start, you're only going to have one. That changes over time. So there is two things I need to talk about here. The maximum number of Spirits, which is actually two, even though you only have one at the start, but there's also a maximum limit of spirits of one type. So that means from the get-go, you could have one lightning and one fire, but not two lightning spirits. But how that changes is 
once you have the elemental do support right here, this gives you plus one maximum for the supported skill, which means that the two maximum here does not change, but this one now changes to two. So now you can use the same golem twice, which is very, very strong because now you can have just scale one element. And the third one you get at level 62 with socialite. This actually has a downside that gives you extra chance to lose nourishment, but it gives you both plus one quantity, right? So it will both increase this to three and this to three, and then you basically have your end game setup. But what skills do we actually use? So we have our main skill right here, which is summon thunder spirit. If you want to look at it, it's very, very in-depth and confusing. Basically, all you have to know is enhanced skill, very good. Normal skill, okay. Ultimate, good, but that is locked behind a weird memory. You don't need to think about it. You're not really going to cast the ultimates. Okay. So Summon Thunder Spirit, as a support, you have Savage Growth, which gives you growth, which equals good, right? As we already talked about. Harvest Time gives you a ton of damage. Now, the thing with Harvest Time is it gets better the more growth you have. And at the start, you don't have that much. So I wouldn't really use this at the start. I would introduce it later, probably around about level 90 or so, maybe 85 even. Instead of Harvest Time... Early, what you want is probably servant damage, which if you didn't know, at some points they decided to name it minions and at some other points they just call it servants. It's the same thing, but they were just like, you know what, let's sprinkle in some spice in here. All right. So lightning pen, very strong against high res enemies, all of them. I'm not 100% sure about this one. Elemental duo you need and elemental fusion basically means you can't shock, but you do a lot more damage. You could definitely play around with some shock. I personally didn't. The second skill, which is Nourishment, is going to be on Rhythm Support. Basically, what Rhythm does is every so or so seconds, it casts the skill, unless it's on cooldown. So as you can see right here, I don't do anything right now, and it is going to proc whenever the cooldown is up. Important to note is, you actually don't need the mana for this. So even if you're reserved to zero mana, it will still proc. Not really relevant to this, just saying. Which already alleviates one button, which is very nice. We have cooldown reduction here and also mania to give it a little bit extra effect. Then we have elemental shock, which basically removes elemental resistances and gives you a little bit of extra damage. Extra duration, cooldown reduction, mania. I also put cost conversion, which at this point actually I don't need. At this point I have enough mana reservation, but if you're struggling with mana, you can put everything on cost conversion with just a little bit of region. You're not even going to feel anything. And then also Dazzling Bloom, which if you're a PoE player is basically Convocation. You can get your minions towards you, but you can also get them somewhere else. So it's not just that they go towards you. You can also teleport them wherever you want on the screen and they get a big damage buff. It's really strong. And then as our last skill, which is going to be our right click, is this one right here. It grants four stacks of nourishment when you use the trade skill as a cooldown. And yeah, it kind of trickles down. It's all good. It gives extra movement speed and you just click it whenever it's up. It's very strong. Now, if you have a lot of money, you can also buy a certain hero memory that will automate this. So then you have to click one less. As for auras down here, we're using elemental resistances, which at this point is basically useless. Now, what you would really like to use, and I just didn't yet figure out the mana reservation really, is you would really want an extra damage aura here. So as you can see, we have Precise projectiles, electric conversion. And since these spirits are attack-based, you also want weapon amplification. I just couldn't really figure out the mana right now. So once you have your res fixed elsewhere, definitely replace this. This one only reserves 20% and the other aura 40%. So that's a problem. Precise projectiles gives you a little bit of projectile speed, but it's mostly about the more damage. And electric conversion, just additional lightning damage. We have an auto defense set up with protection field, which basically transfers some of the damage that you would take instead to your minion. Extremely strong. We have that on seal conversion, so it reserves life instead of mana. And since we already have this here, we also put our steadfast on life, which gives us a ton of armor, which is one of our main defensive mechanisms. And then we also have magical source, although magical source at this point is not really needed. You can completely cut this if you have no mana problems. And then there's a few ways you can apply your curse so Curse on Hit doesn't work on your Spirit. You would actually have to hit an enemy. And you can do that with Leap Slam, right? With your movement skill. But it is quite awkward against bosses. Because you don't want to really want to be near them if they hit a lot, right? So you want to be rather doing cast when damage taken. In my personal opinion, I like it a little bit more. But you can also completely cut this setup because this Curse is not up that often. But Electrocute is very strong. Now, 
let's now go over the movement skill. So if you look over hero ranking, the top players are mostly playing double wand. What that means is they have to use blink. I personally do not like it. It's not fast enough for my style, even with a lot of cooldown recovery. Plus, if you spam cooldowns all the time, this message is on screen all the goddamn time. What I opted to do instead is leap slam. It is a lot nicer. And what I'm doing is I'm actually using a mallet, right? Because you cannot leap slam with two wands. And the reason I can actually leap slam fast, even though this mallet has like no attack speed, is because of the gloves of the mage's assistant, which, if you scroll down here, as long as you have a focus blessing, sets your attack speed to a certain amount. It rolls from three to four. You can also corrupt it up to five. So yeah, so basically attack speed doesn't do anything, but you're always at that amount without having to scale any, which is huge on a minion caster because you don't want any attack speed. It doesn't increase your damage. It would be only for Leap Slam. So just getting it fixed with those gloves is absolutely crucial. But I will say this, if you're fine with blinking around, do it, just try it yourself. I just really like how this feels while mapping. I really like the extra speed. And one more thing that our Leap Attack does is you can put hardened on here which gives you 25 actually was it 25 yeah 25 percent damage reduction which is huge and it also puts a mark on an enemy which makes it so it dealt more damage to you and it also has less evasion and you deal extra critical strike damage in terms of how you play this build i'm gonna quickly show you a tier 8 right here let's just do this one and show it off it's very easy to play like i said what you have to do, you have basically three buttons that you have to press. If you have the hero memory, you don't have to press your right click at all, but I currently still have to. So you press Dazzling Bloom, you press Elemental Shock, and you press your uh, talent, right? And otherwise, you just leap slam around, and while you do that, your minions are basically destroying everything. So let's pick up this statue right here. And yeah, as you can see right here, it is very smooth. I can just leap slam through, and my minions do kind of all the work. In tier 8s, right, you need some defense. For example, these Traveler mods right here are completely going to destroy your ass, right? So be careful of those kind of monster effects, especially early when you don't have enough regen, right? Because once they hit you, you don't have a recovery spell, which is a big deal. You can see my regen is kicking in. That is very nice. You don't have a recovery skill because you only have the five skill slots and you need them all for damage. Nice. So yeah, Basically, you're going through everything like butter. You're pressing your buttons. It is quite nice right here. Now let's get to the boss real quickly. Your single target DPS. I mean, basically you go here and you don't have to be nearby. And yeah, it just dies. I guess bosses like this tier 8 traveler. Once again, pretty goddamn easy. Just that with bosses that obviously deal a lot of damage. Once you're in tier 8, you should really just make sure you don't get hit by anything you can play very, very carefully, right? So you're basically just a buff bot, right? So you can stay there. They are going to distract the boss. Maybe you can taunt them with some setup. I've, I've seen people do that, but yeah, he's already phased from his first phase. Just keep pumping, right? Just keep right-clicking and getting your nourishment stacks up and just don't get hit, right? And everything's gonna be fine. So as you can see right here, you need to get your damage up high enough so this is not going to be a struggle, but in general, yeah, I mean, it's a very easy playstyle. You can just dance around and let your minions do the work. That's the beauty of a minion build. Some people love it. Some people hate it. Your choice. But next up, let's talk about the gear. The most important thing for this build is plus to minion skill levels. Important to note is there is sources of active skill levels that you do not want. Plus to active skill level doesn't do anything because this is not technically an active skill. I had to find out the hard way. And if you look at the trade house, you will see a lot of people with hammers that have like active and minion skill level. And weirdly enough, they're selling it very cheap. That is because they found that out the hard way. As you can see right here, I'm scaling up to level 32. Technically, if you want to get the most out of your spirit, you want to be at least at level 34 because right here, grow with it gives you minus three chance to lose nourishment up to minus 42. So if you have plus 14 skill levels, that means you get the maximum out of it. Now, the second thing is critical strike damage to minions. The easiest way to fix this without having to break your bank is Horned Ring. This does cost like, I think 60, 70 FE right now, but you can wear two of them if you want to, and you can kind of fix your crit damage. You have very low crit damage on this build, so that is something you have to fix, and this can up to double your damage, even more later. So if you're struggling with damage, that is a big thing. And after that, you want to look into getting a lot of life. 
And you also want to look into having as many armor bases as possible. So let's start with the gear. The Sorcerer Mask here, you can't really get armor because it's a, an energy shield base and you want it for the plus one. We have a little bit of resistances, right? Like region is very nice to have a little bit. Life, chance for minions to do double damage. Okay. You can get a lot of armor here. I wish it was more, but it is what it is. We have a ton of region, a ton of max life. Aura effect is huge as well. Now, if you look right here on my info sheet, I actually don't have that much armor, right? I have like 31,000, but that is still... 53% fizz damage reduction and 32% LE damage reduction. So even this little amount of armor can make a big difference. Then our amulet, once again, plus one to lightning. Life, armor, aura effect, all the good stuff, right? Try to cap your resistances. Gloves of Mage Assistant just make your Leap Slam feel really good. If you are the Blink version, this is completely useless. Replace it with something else. The most expensive piece I have in the build is Winter of Origin. This one basically gives you four minimum Focus Blessings, right? So it takes care of that. But Focus Blessings don't do anything for your minions. However, that's what this belt also changes. 6% more damage per Focus Blessing. Very, very strong. It also gives you additional cooldown recovery speed, which is super strong for all your extra Empower skills, right? And yeah, you get some minion attack speed. It is incredibly good. I think currently it goes for around about 300 to 400. If you can, do spend the extra 100, 200 FE to get actually a four roll here. It's worth it. And we have our boots. Now, movement speed is not actually that important with the version I'm currently running with because Leap Slam, you don't, movement speed doesn't really do anything. If you're Blink, you better cap your movement speed and get it everywhere. Otherwise, the build is going to feel awful. You get some region, you get a ton of armor, movement speed, or effect, all the good stuff. Horn ring, super good. Second ring, I did replace horn ring because I felt like my damage was okay. The mod up top here, for every 60 growth, you get plus one additional damage. This is very weak early, but the higher you go, the better it gets. So it's a really good mod at this point. It gives me like, on average, I would say like 7-8% more damage. So not a huge deal, but definitely good. This mostly caps my resistances, gives me some extra life. Now, as for the hammer, I'm using a Vanquisher Mallet, and I have plus four Dominion skill levels. I wish it was plus six. This hammer is very mediocre, but it does what it's supposed to do. So, you will see here, I have crit damage for minions, I have crit strike for minions, and plus two minion skill level. But why am I using this hammer? Because the rest doesn't really make sense. Well, the reason is because of the passive that I have right here, the passive talent from God of Machines which is isomorphic arms. Main hand weapon is applied to minions. Now, don't ask me how this exactly works. I tried testing it over and over. I'm not 100% sure. The wording got changed this patch. It doesn't work like it used to. So what it does right now is it basically gives your minions this weapon. Attack speed kind of works on it. So if I got extra attack speed on this, my minions would attack faster. But if I get extra crit, it doesn't give me extra crit. It's very weird. But as far as I understand, it does get the base damage. And giving minions base damage is incredibly strong. So that's the first thing. Second thing is, this lightning damage works for your minions as well. Because it's on your weapon. Everything here works for minions. Elemental damage works for minions. Even though it doesn't say minions. Critical strike damage, same thing. If you're the wand version, then you don't want that. And then you're just going to use the other talent, which we're going to talk about now. All right, let's go into talents here. We start off with God of Machines. Our talents are, first up, Orders, 20% more damage. Nice. Second up, Isomorphic Arms. If you want build, you want Mighty Guard right here. Gives you plus two to level, a little bit of extra initial growth. It's nice. The one version definitely does more damage. It just overall didn't really fit my playstyle. However, if I was to push higher and higher and higher, I would probably sacrifice the speed with Leap Slam, and I would also go for once. So just so you know, it's not like Leap Slam is strictly better or anything like that. It's just... At the current tier that I'm farming at, the extra speed is just awesome. So this is pretty normal minion damage, minion attack speed, minion crit damage. Nothing really too special here. At the end, you definitely want to grab these the chance to get extra enhanced skills. This is something you kind of need later. You don't need that from the get-go, but it's nice to pick up at roundabout level 70, 80. So this you can kind of disregard at the start. But you definitely want to get that plus one minion level as soon as possible. Second one, also no-brainer, is Alchemist. And our talents here are first source. This gives us minus sealed mana for a Maga skill. And it also gives extra Magus effect and empower skill effect. So all your active skills, basically. And then we're using Talents of Abyss. This one is a little bit of a weird one. Because Talents of Abyss seems to be better 
later than Battle Trumpet. So Battle Trumpet gives you 50% chance to use Enhanced Skill, but it has a downside of making your minions slower, which can also not be a downside because that means it's not going to blow as much nourishment. I would really just try this out on the dummy yourself. It depends on how your setup is. But uh, Battle Trumpet can be viable. But I'm basically taking Talents for the extra damage right here. Also, nothing really special to say here. The big points you want to get to are the 8% of damage transferred to your minions, which is absolutely insane. The only questionable ones are like this barrier thing right here with severe injury, but you kind of have to fill out this tree. You want to get to 36 points at least. Don't forget to also pick up armor. I see a lot of people not doing this. I would definitely go for it. And then at the end, we're opting for Steel Vanguard, which gives us more aura effect, very strong. And then also extra empower effect from Knowledgeable. Important to note here is, once again, if you're using the gloves, you need to have focus blessings and you want to have them always up. So it needs to be, yeah, it just needs to be airtight. So what you want is you definitely want this one point down here, which gives you one additional tenacity, agility, and flows of, and focus. This is basically minimum stacks. So as you can see right here, I'm currently not doing anything and there's just a random agility blessing here. That is because this doesn't go away. I can't gain it. I can't lose it. It's just there. And yeah, Steel Vanguard has a ton of good points. It can help you cap your resistances, and especially Erosion Res is very, very strong. The biggest points in this tree, though, are these two right here. 10% less elemental damage taken for a point, and then also 15% of Fizz taken as Ellie, which means now your physical damage goes against your Ellie resistances. And then you also get a ton of aura effect, which is just absolutely huge and some minus sealed mana and yeah that's just overall going to be really strong and power skill effect as well now then we have our slate setup if you're wondering how we get to plus 12 to levels that is mostly through slates as you can see right here plus one plus one plus one i think i have uh, three or four plus one yeah basically almost all of them if you're rolling your slates you definitely want to go for god of the machines it has the most outcomes that are really strong as you can see right here i have another one with eight percent of damage transferred to a minion you can get cdr minion damage minion crit is a huge one as well some projectile speed whatever you want right the world is your oyster some minus sealed mana if you really need it now talking about the new league we also have to quickly talk about the candles which i don't really have i have one really good one which is this one which gives me cdr and aura effect huge the other one is i mean it's just minion damage a little bit and a little bit of less damage taken, which is nice. The best one would be, I think you can get up to plus two minion levels. I couldn't verify. I haven't dropped one yet, but I've heard about it, which would be huge. And then if you're the blink version, you definitely want movement speed as well. Now, as for relic and memories, my relic is a little bit specialized because I get the empower effect also applies to spirit magi. So if you look at um, spirit magi, these are usually like golems in PoE, right? They give you buffs. And that's what they are. This hero, however, transforms them into damage dealers, right? But what happens is the buff doesn't work for your minions, right? And they are the damage dealers. With this, you basically give your minions this 47% extra, extra attack speed. And it also gets increased by power effect and stuff like that. Spirit Magus effect and whatnot. So you actually get like 60 plus attack speed. It's very, very huge. But what that means is also that your nourishment stacks are going to get eaten alive. So this is why if you want a relic like this, you will have to go for these kind of memories where you have chance to not lose a nourishment stack. I have a, a total of three right here between minus seven and minus eight, and they're very, very strong, obviously. As a second mod, if you can get chance for extra projectile, that's good. These do not shotgun, but there's like a line in the enhanced skill that says you deal more damage the more projectiles you have. But yeah, it, it's like whatever. It's, it's not that big of a deal. But this mod definitely is. Otherwise, what I see most people doing with their Relic, actually, is they use everyone's gift. So this one gives you extra maximum nourishment stacks for every even-numbered engram. So that's basically this one and this one. In this case, this guy is not that good. That's why it's so cheap. You want to have this slot open and this slot open, and then you get plus four nourishment stacks. And then also you get, I don't know, 12 chance to use an enhanced skill. So this one's very strong. I actually tried it out. It was, for me, even a little bit of a downgrade because uh, I had the hero memories. But if you want to use the hero memories for something else, I think this relic will probably be GG. Now, at the end here, a few mistakes that you should really avoid with this build. For me, personally, it was the first time I went into minions, really. 
I played it in season one, but that was like laughable. I, was, I had like no idea what it was doing back then. So mistakes to avoid. This is basically stuff that I did wrong myself. Um, upgrade your gear. So the reason I'm saying this is this character is so laughably strong early, like such an S tier character that you just don't upgrade your gear. You're like, oh, this is just going to be smooth sailing. This is how it's going to be. But there's going to be a reality check at some point where the game gets harder and your scaling falls off, right? And now, like every other build, right, in existence, you have to upgrade your gear. So yeah, don't forget about that, right? Big mistakes I see people make, once again, minion crit damage is huge. You don't have any right now, right? You you don't get any. Um, You need to get a good weapon, right? So that means either the isomorphic setup that I have right here, where you get a ton of critical strike damage, or you get go double wand with a ton of minion damage. And also, once again, plus two levels and all the good stuff. Big mistake I see people making is, and this is every single league ever since this came out, statue of the new god down here. Get some slates. These, like, all of these slates, I mean, I th they kind of triple my damage. I'm not even over-exaggerating right here. And what I paid for these in total is probably, like, 500 if E or so, right? I just bought all of these plus one minion skill level, and the rest I just rolled with currency that I have myself. There's no unique here. There's nothing here. These are literally just bought, and then I applied some mods. That's it, right? So Divinity Slates... Please get them as soon as possible. They're insane. And the third one is, and this is a big one once you get into tier 8, you need some region and some armor. The amount of armor I have on this build is laughable, right? I have energy shield gloves, energy shield helmet. The only way I get armor is like my body armor, my boots, and then I think like a roll somewhere. I don't even, I don't even remember, right? And I have a little bit of percentage and I have the aura, right? That's all I have. And for that, I get this, right? The reworked armor is completely insane, so make use of it. As well as that, you want HP, obviously, but you don't need to stack it that high, right? Currently, I'm just running around with around about 3.3k right here. And the reason you don't need to get it too high is the higher you get it, the less valuable the region is, right? And you can't leech because you're minion build. So you have to get some region. You get some on the tree, which is percentage-based, which is nice, but flat region, one or two of these rolls can completely revamp your character and make it just feel a lot better. So if you want to farm tier 8s like I currently do, you need to do that. Otherwise, no shot. Also, don't try it tier 8s until you have around about 200 million uh, roundabout DPS.